Sometimes we pick on other ad platforms for copying things from Facebook, and it's usually pretty good strategy. Most recently, LinkedIn copied Facebook's ad library idea, and you can check out our video on that right here. But today we wanna to flip the script. We're gonna talk about how Facebook copied something from Google, and from Google search of all places. Facebook recently released site links for their ads, and while they might not be huge game changers, we think they're a pretty cool feature that you should probably check out. So in this video, I wanna show you what Facebook ads site links are, then show you how to set them up in your account. I wanna start off by giving an example of what site links look like, because I personally had never seen them in the wild before, and I would be surprised if many of you have seen them as well, since they're just now kind of rolling out to a lot of accounts. So if we're in this business help center section, let's go ahead and scroll down to the ad preview part that we can see here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just play the video that Facebook's put together because it does a pretty good job outlining site links. So as you can see here, when somebody sees the Facebook feed, underneath are gonna be these links and they're gonna have little icons. There's a number of them. When you click on it, it'll take you to the website. You can then click back and then you're back in the Facebook feed. So each one of those little icons down at the bottom where you see makeup, fragrance and body are going to be the site links. That's what they're gonna look like. So there's gonna be a component of tiny little image, little bit of text that then sends you to a different website. Very similar to what a Google Ads site link is, but of course with Facebook spin on it. So how do we set these up in our accounts? The first thing is that there are gonna be some very specific criteria for you to be able to use site links in the Meta Ads platform. First, they're only compatible with traffic, engagement, leads and sales campaign objectives. None of the other campaign objectives will work for them. They will not show up there. But in addition to that, you also need to be using only a single image or video ad format. These are not compatible with carousels or collections, and you can only use website as your destinations. If you're trying to use Messenger or a lead gen form, none of those are gonna work because again, these are intended to drive people to certain pages on a website. So it makes the most sense for them to be in an ad that's already trying to drive somebody to a website, not someplace else. Now that we have that out of the way, let's hop into an actual ad account and show you how to set these up. We're gonna be in a client account for this. So we've got some things blurred out. We're gonna need to use an example ad. It's gonna look really ugly. But just as a fun fact, if you use an ad account to make a lot of mock-ups for YouTube videos, but you don't ever actually advertise anything, apparently that makes Facebook mad and they deactivate your account and you can never advertise again. So just a little word to the wise on that one. So we're already in one of the traffic campaigns in this client account. And I've just made an example ad that we're gonna work with. So if I just come in here and click edit, you'll be able to see all of the regular setup pieces for your Facebook ad. You need to pick the identity. You need to click the add setup, which again, we mostly just need to make sure that it's a single image or video. Carousel and collection will not work. But then right below that is gonna be the section that we need to pay attention to. That's gonna be the add sources section. At the beginning, there's something about a catalog that doesn't really matter. But down below that, the source URL and site links are where we're gonna focus. As you can see down here at the bottom, there are zero site links added to this ad creative right now, but there are a couple ways that we can go about adding them. You can start by typing your web page into the source URL field. I'm actually not gonna do that. What I wanna do instead is come to this add button. This is gonna open up the entire builder and I wanted to start this way because we still have the option to add our URL at a high level. That can be done up here. But let's say you already know what pages on your site you wanna use as site links. For that, you just need to fill out the fields down here below and import the information. So for that, let's say I wanted to add in a few pages of the Paid Media Pros website. I could start by adding a display label here or the text about Paid Media Pros. And then I could put in the about page in the URL section. Pretty simple. The biggest thing is for the display label, you can only use 15 characters for this field, so you can't ramble on in this area. The last thing we need, if you'll remember the preview we already saw, is we need a thumbnail. We need to upload an individual thumbnail for this, and the only guidelines Facebook gives is that it has to be at least 300 by 300. Now, I know that we tell you all the time to be really specific with your creatives on Facebook and make sure that everything looks really, really good all the time and is highly buttoned up, but if you remember this preview, these images are super small. They're not super easy to see. Whatever detail you put in there is gonna get lost. So the more simple these images are, the better you're gonna be. Now, as I mentioned, this is just an example ad. I don't have really good images for this. So just bear with me while these are ugly. 
but if I'm going to go to the thumbnail section, one thing you'll see is that it actually took me to the files on my computer, not the account files in your Meta Ads account. You have to upload an individual image to Facebook every single time for a new site link. You cannot find them in the Meta Ads library. Seems like a really weird oversight to me, but this is where we are. So for now, again, I'm just gonna put in some super basic images that aren't really a good use case, but you'll get the point. We'll start off with Joe's bio photo here. Now that I have that added, nothing has changed yet because I need to click the add button over here. When I do that, now we have a new site link on there. You can see what it looks like right here. You'll also notice the new criteria that we have where you need to add at least three site links to display them on your ad. The preview that we saw in the help article has four, but the minimum is three. So now you've seen the manual option. As I mentioned, there's another way that you can get site links added to your account, and that's simply by using your URL option up here. So if I just go and add in our Paid Media Pros account, once I type that in, there are now 14 site links available for me to choose from. Now that's certainly not all the pages that are on the Paid Media Pros site, but these are the ones that it pre-populated and selected for me to weed through. You can still see the About page is the one that shows up at the top, but it has now removed the image that I applied to it. But at this point, all I need to do is go to the Upload Image section. Again, I need to choose from the files on my computer, click Open, and again, I have to click the Add button at the bottom to apply it. Now you'll see that it is populated down here. And then there's the preview of what it would look like. I'll do this for two more real quick. Again, nothing is gonna be highly strategic about this, but choose this one. We'll click Add, and one more. And now we have three site links loaded up and ready to go. The biggest thing is we just need to remove all of the ones that don't have the image associated with them. It's gonna take me a minute, so with the power of editing. Of course, as I was clicking through one, I deleted the wrong one, so then I had to create a new one. But anyway, now we're down to just three. So now that we have all of our site links with the images and the URLs that we wanna use, we just need to click Save. And now we can see that we have three site links added. And then in this preview over here off to the right, you can see that we have the three tiny little site links that would show up in the Facebook feed. If you go to the advanced preview, you'll be able to see all of the ad units that this ad is eligible for. And I did this because I wanted to show you that only the Facebook feed option has site links added to it. None of the other ones do. So this is only a Facebook feed feature, will not show up anywhere else, not even in the Instagram feed. Once you get your ad finished with all the site links attached, you go ahead and click publish. I did want to talk about how site links are reported on Facebook. There's a couple things that I want to talk about here. First, is that all URL parameters in the tracking section of your ad will also be applied to your site links. So you don't need to attach any UTM parameters to the end of those site link URLs. It's gonna populate all of the information that you already had in that tracking section. But then the actual reporting on the clicks and conversions for those site links are just gonna be grouped under the regular ad metric. You're not gonna be able to see a breakdown in the Meta Ads interface. But it does say it adds an additional UTM source with some site link information to your URL tracking. And to be quite honest, I'm not 100% sure how that's going to look in conjunction with your additional tracking if you're using UTM source equals Facebook or Meta or Instagram like we always do with campaigns. So this will definitely be a learning curve, at least for me, maybe for you guys as well. But just so you know, you will not be able to see click and conversion performance in the Meta Ads interface for these site links. Your URL parameters will apply, but there's also gonna be a weird one added in there as well. So just keep an eye out for that. But then we just wanna close out by talking about a couple of best practices for site links on Facebook. And for the most part, these are gonna be pretty similar to what we would wanna use on Google, just again, with a Facebook twist. Use simple and clear images for those thumbnails. Again, 300 by 300 is the minimum size you can use, but the more basic the imagery you use, the better it's gonna come off in those tiny little thumbnails that you see, since they are so small. Make sure that you're using important and relevant pages on your website that can either help support the ad or give the user an option for something different if they don't like exactly what they see in the ad creative. And then lastly, always test different pages and descriptions, even for the same pages. You do get to add in your own custom description of the page, so you can adjust that if you need to. But then even though the reporting isn't as clear as we might like it to be, there 
are options for you to be able to see how many people come to the site with the site links, either by tracking them down in your third party tracking like GA4 or something like that. Or you can just keep an eye on your ad creatives in the platform. If you have things similar, you notice that ads with certain site links tend to do better than ads with other site links. Maybe that'll give you some insights as well. Overall, I don't really see a downside to using site links on your ads just the same as I wouldn't with any sort of Google ads or Microsoft ad search campaign. All they do is help you find different ways to potentially attract customers, bring them to your website, and give them an opportunity to convert. So hopefully this rundown has introduced you to site links and now you're ready to get started testing. But if you have any questions about site links on Facebook or anything else in the Facebook ads platform, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.